Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. It's lovely to be talking to you all. Um, thank you for that lovely introduction. Um, so as you said, I'm Tim Keen Seed and I am the Youth Programs Coordinator at the Aotearoa Peace Foundation that's based in Auckland, New Zealand. Uh, I'm also a university student. I'm only three years out of high school and as the others have spoken, we acknowledge the nuclear risk we face and the need for fundamental changes at every level, but as a youth myself that works in the field of disarmament, I see and I emphasize that importance of youth initiatives to engage younger people, um, to be having these conversations and becoming more involved. Uh, disarmament work is an area that is dominated by members of the older generations um, and the youth network created by Abolition 2000 is o opening up these platforms for younger people to become a part of the conversation. Um, and that's incredibly important because realistically, this is a dialogue that needs to be having youth at the heart of it. So firstly, Abolition 2000 has been working alongside youth-led nuclear disarmament initiatives for a number of years now, as you probably know. There are currently 115 members in the network from 31 countries, and this includes groups from all nuclear states except from the DPRK. The, this includes uh, youth groups like the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization Youth Group, the International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War Student Network, Unfold Zero, International Student Young Pugwash, and Youth Future Project. These youth organizations are scattered and spread all across, all across the globe, but they're all joined together in their objectives to build a foundation of knowledge for future generations and to build awareness around disarmament. The youth network is a way for various youth-led organizations to connect and collaborate with one another, but it also is really, really key in working to connect individual young people with organizations, actions, and initiatives that are related to peace, sustainable development, and nuclear abolition. In the past, Abolition 2000 has connected these groups to organize initiatives like movie screenings, social media campaigns, petition signing campaigns, Bike Around the Bomb, the I Break Up With Nukes Valentine's Day letter writing campaign, and speeches and attendance at UN conferences. Most notably in November of 2017, the International Youth Conference for the Network was held in Prague over three days. At this conference, representatives from the youth organizations within the network came together from across the world to collaborate and create the Reach High for a Nuclear Weapons Free World. This was a written youth appeal to world leaders at the 2018 UN High Level Conference on Disarmament. And the appeal acknowledged the notion that there are no right hands for wrong weapons and also highlighted the long lasting human and environmental impact um, from producing and testing nuclear weapons. It also insisted on disarmament, diplomacy, and negotiating between countries. The appeal reached world leaders in early 2018 and garnered much response from these diplomatic ambassadors. This conference, things like the initiatives that they have held and all of the outcomes speak volumes to the value of young people and their input to these high-level conferences. These social media campaigns, letter writing, they don't go overlooked. They're definitely received and responded to by leaders and they're very much important. Where I work, uh, as just as an example of being a part of this youth network, um, the Peace Foundation. So we've been part of the Abolition 2000 network um, since 2018, and the network has been a co-partner in our Youth Peace Week since 2018. So this has involved the active promotion of Youth Peace Week and connecting the event with organizations and schools around the world. Youth Peace Week is a global campaign to get young people to run activities in their schools and communities around peace education. Each year involves a theme, um, which is peace and technology this year, and each year it involves an aspect of disarmament dialogue. So kids are invited to take part in activities that promote peace and especially disarmament, and we recruit ambassadors from all over the world to spread this message each year. So for example, last year, a youth seminar um, in peace education was held in Astana, Kazakhstan by Arai Lim, 
who is also a member of the Youth Network, and she is a Peace Foundation ambassador, and she was a former intern at the Peace Foundation. This year, we're looking to do similar and widen the scope with the help of the Abolition 2000 Youth Network, um, because as, as I mentioned, it does wonders for being able to connect organizations and initiatives with people across the world and spread that message. Joining the Youth Network um, is done on the website, uh, the website of Abolition 2000, where you can find the contact details of Marjan, um, and she's the convener of the network. Uh, there's been lots of high-level discussion here, uh, governmental, legislative, economic changes for the issues we're, ta we're talking about. But I think what's key for us to remember here is that youth actually play an integral part in this discussion, and we can't be leaving them out of the decision-making process because realistically this is, this is their world, this is the world that they're going to be um, coming into uh, and leading and being the decision makers and the change makers. So we really need to be having these talks with them because we can't be leaving and leaving them in the dark. Um, thank you all for your time. Um, I look forward to talking to you all about this more.